So we had a few casualties where these broke off. So I bought a set of these. Now let's see if they fit well. Yeah, it's pretty good. Nice. Now we can just kind of go like here, fit that through there, slide that into here. All right, so we need to make sense of all this stuff. Like what goes where and whatnot. The best way to do this is just to kind of like lay it out. You know, here we got to figure out like, well, we know that's not going anywhere. I gotta make sense of this. This is, uh, here's the bolt for that bracket that we're fighting with. That, that goes there. This yellow hose goes to here, because we have a yellow, see right there? Yellow, yellow, right there. Okay. Um, all right, I gotta like, kind of mess around with this a little bit. Let's see where this, this is routed correctly. It All right, take a bit of, of a view here. That is how things should be from the way it feels. Like these injectors are right here. Hose is there. Those injectors are there. You have two blue connectors, same style. The one with the longer wire goes to the intake side. That weird black plug goes down there, back here. Exhaust side, blue connector, intake side. Something goes right here. No, bro. What's up? You good? Yeah. I'm good. You good? Yeah. Hey, you know. So I think that's roughly it. We gotta get this bolt here. See that bolt right there? That bolt. Sorry. Come on. That bolt there goes into that hole right there to hold this bracket. So remember this bolt here, pulls that bracket. So I think we gotta put that on first before we plug this to the intake camshaft. At least that's what makes sense to me. Does this bracket go here too? Hmm. You know? Hmm. Hold on one second. Not so fast, buddy. So I think right here. Oops. This bolt here has to come out bolt that holds the heater pipe. There you go. And that goes like that, right? And I believe the... I have a feeling that this goes on top like that. Unscrew that. I'm sorry. Just unscrewed that. So I have two bolts, right? I slide that one over, put that one like this. There you go, that makes more sense. Can you see? And then that should hold both of those together. The reason why there was like some tissue in there, it's because when you're trying to drop this bolt down into here, it's easy to, uh, for that to happen. That's one of the tricks that you do is uh, you get a piece of paper, you get the bolt, or your socket, right? So you go, paper, push it in the socket. Makes a little bit of a tighter grip like that. 
then you want to go like this. There it is. Gotcha. to bend the bracket up a little bit to expose the hole. Let's get this yellow hose back on. See right here. Yellow to yellow. Let's so cut this off. Right here. Slide this on. Kind of like the nice thing about hoses and harnesses and wires and stuff, they kind of remember where they used to be, you know? Just kind of leave them alone. All right, I gotta spend some time pushing that on. I just blew up her uh, little pool. Pretty cool. And so we gotta get this back into position. And uh, before we do that, let's plug this blue part of the harness in. Blue plug for the intake. Okay, so now, we have a, right here, we have uh, the these two nuts. Haha, <laughs> funny. Um, I right, see the whole square, whole square. Can't mess it up. Whole square. Just drop that in like this. Here's the stud and the nut that's supposed to be on it. Don't connect this blue plug yet. You need the space. There you go. That's that. One, two, tighten those up. I gotta plug this in now, and then the blue plug. Okay, so we gotta shift our focus from this side to the bracket on the, on the passenger side because I'm running out of sunlight and I want to show you how to get it back in. And we need to get it back again because I just don't want the uh, anything to, you know, because the engine is still jacked up. So I need to like make sure we don't compromise the AC compressor. So, all right, let's go ahead and do that. We gotta get these out. And uh, these uh, spark plug tube gaskets are, see how they sit? That's how far they go down. Alright, so here's your uh, issue. We gotta get these out. They come out this way. I'm trying to chisel here just to kind of bend. Again, don't right there we go. That seems like it's working. Alright, so now I've bent the metal, right, that is on the spine of this. I think I can do this now. I can should be able to just Should be able to just go in my brass punch now on the metal itself and just bada. I don't know if bada is a common refrain, but for success. But there you go. That's it. Okay. So just do that, and then we need to. Uh, we're gonna clean this off a little here. Yeah, I don't want to use any brake clean now I think about it. Okay. And then we're going to reinstall this. I have two sockets. I have a 30 millimeter socket and I have a 27 millimeter socket. The 30 millimeter goes on the outside quite nicely. So pay attention to, to the orientation. 
this goes towards the sky. Alright, so this part, the clothes side, goes down like this. And you don't have to worry about how far to go because there's a lip and you can't go any further. So that's good to know. Um, we're going to use a little bit of uh, silicone lube. Silicone lubricant. I'm going to use the, the larger socket, the 30 uh, millimeter socket first, because that one sits all the way on the outside. Now this fits inside of the and you can listen to it, you can hear how the pitch sounds when you're tapping down and you can tell how far how far in you are. So there you go. So I am I'm just looking to see if I've hit the rim. That, that 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 little part that this has a little bit of a lip, you know, where it bottoms out at. Okay, good. So we bottomed out. That's it. So do that three more. Times. One of the uh, difficulties of this is uh, some of these when you pull them out, uh, they'll leave behind a little bit of rubber on the inside so all I did is took a rag brake cleaner brake parts cleaner, carburetor cleaner spray it in there and just rub aggressively like that and that'll get rid of the uh, little bit of residue rubber on the walls it's important to do that because you want to get a good seal so if you look inside of the uh, cylinder the spark plug tube, you can see right here that it's seated. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for that nice seat all the way around. It's hard to see what you're seeing with a viewfinder, but that's what you want. It's really impressive how uh, this basket doesn't want to come out. Man, this thing has been holding on for dear life. Okay, so I got a new one here. Any like contamination you need to address. And uh, I don't have any, so. When I say contamination, I mean like particulates. This new replacement gasket only has one of those tabs on that side. So before we proceed, we're going to turn the crank 360 degrees three times. And the reason why we're doing that, we want to make sure that it turns freely and there's no binding before we put the cover on. Then we're going to turn clockwise. This is a 19 millimeter. Three, four places we need to put some silicone on. We have right here, right by that seam right here. 
But on the opposite side, back here, it's the same thing. There's that seam right here. Okay, right there. On this side, I'm going to put it right in the corner right here. Do the same on this side over here. Right there. Six new grommets. So we have these castle nets. Remember, I lost one. I found. I found. I didn't find one. I just went to the uh, junkyard and got another. So. Get one more for back here. That's the same. So there's a tightening sequence. I'll, sh I'll flash it on the screen for you. All right, so we're gonna do this in three passes, right? We're gonna go, uh, actually I can even show you the tightening sequence. It's not really that many, it's just six bolts. This is number one, that's number two, that's three, that's four, that's five, and that's six. So, what's up? How you doing? Good. How you good? You good. Good to see you. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So, with that being said, we're going to finish at uh, 12 newton meters. We're going to do three passes. The first pass we're going to do is going to be 3.4 newton meters. This is, these are 10 millimeter bolts. And you notice I have a really short extension on this. I'm using a short extension because uh, the shorter your extension is, the more accurate your torque is gonna be, your torque values. Okay, so that's our first pass. All right, I'm gonna put the uh, oil cover on just because it like, feels like something's gonna fall in there. All right, we'll do it in three passes. Next. We're going to go up to like uh, 9 Newton meters. This is our last pass, we're going to go to 12 Newton meters. And that's it, that's our third pass. This is what we have so far, just to give you an overview of what you're looking at. See that that's going to get bolted onto there. This is going to get bolted onto there. Okay, all of our hoses. Okay. All right. So this is filmed out of order because this has to go on first before you put on these engine mounts here, which I had a bit of a problem with. This one in particular, you'll see coming up. So this goes on first, engine mounts, belts, power steering.
All right, sir, so this is the engine mount. And this is the orientation of it. So that's the whole thing. You got these. Oh, buddy. Uh, these two holes right here that sit on the frame of the engine, frame of the car. Those two bolts go down. This yellow strap here is the ground strap for this ground strap. Good thing we did that because I was like, I don't know where the heck that goes. Um, this rubber dampener goes inside of here. So this bolt here holds it together. So yeah, it sits down like this inside of the uh, inside of here. And these two bolts right here go in, go right here. The, this bracket that we, uh, remember, or, uh, we lost the bolt. One of those bolts just total catastrophic failure. So we're down one, which sucks. So change of plan. I think we should put the engine mount in after we, installed I think the belt and the power stand pump should go in first yeah okay so this mess right here that we have two 12 millimeter bolts another one right here and I do have a tool for that Now let's slide this into position, just like that. Belt's a serious pain in the butt. So you get a long 14 millimeter like this. See how long that is? You're gonna turn that way, forwards, right? This is the tensioner right here. Like that. the hardest part right here. The power steering pump is so close to the frame, so you're gonna have to squeeze the belt sideways, push it in, right? That's how I got it on first. And then it goes crank pulley around power steering pump underneath this idler. Idler around alternator up. Power steering. Oh yeah, leave this one off. Get this one last. Go down, put it underneath the uh, tensioner. Tensioner to the crank, right? So remember, this is off last. This one goes on last. This is the uh, power steering pump. You take your 14 millimeter here, put it on the tensioner, right? Push that way, right? And then you pray to God, choose some choice words and push this forward and slide it on top of that. You got the uh, bracket to do. I think we can do this. <laughs> well, at least I hope we can. Alright, we got two 17s down here. Bolts holds the power center. Reservoir. Size matters. Yep, that's what she said. I chose to do this one first because this is the harder one. 
Does anybody else like to do the hardest one first? This drop in those two holes over there. This one in the middle. That's what we have so far, right? Let's see? Okay, these two bolts here are gonna go into this little weird angle thing here. So for now, we're gonna take those two out, right? And we're gonna put them right here. For the longest I'm struggling with this, right? I'm trying to get this lined up. Not sure why this this is not sitting on there. It's probably because I need to jack the engine up. Ah, such an idiot. All right, the engine's sitting too low. I'll bring you back. So this is how everything looks so far. These two bolts go right there, holds this in like that. This sits down there. I'll put it in and I'll show you. Okay, but you see the hole right here is not ready yet. We're just gonna go like this, kind of like let's pull the engine forwards a little. Let's see how I did that. And get that over. And now, short, short, short one right here. Okay. So now we can get our nut right here on top of there. Drop this bolt down into here. Make sure everything is started by hand. You don't want to cross thread anything. Cool. Now we're tightening this down. All right. So don't forget to attach the uh, ground strap right here. Now I kind of have everything loose. I didn't tighten anything down. That's loose. These are all loose. I'm just gonna keep everything loose and then get it all together and then tighten everything down. All right, so that's everything. Those two bolts there, this bolt to the frame, these two to the um, rubber bush in here. That one, make sure it lined this up because it has uh, witness marks for where it should be for the engine. Then you have uh, those two 19s back there, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. I think that's also a 19, All right? All right, so I made a bit of a mistake yesterday. So in my haste into trying to, uh, you know, I violated some rules that I'm very much aware of. And um, right, one of them is, you know, sometimes you have to know when not to rush. And I knew not to rush, I was rushing because I wanted to get this bracket in, right? And because this job is kind of uh, involved, uh, you know, there are steps you have to follow. So I forgot to pay attention to my steps. There was a reason why the power steering pump was removed. It's because this hose would block me from placing the, uh, you know, the cylinder cover on, cylinder head cover on, and, uh, I totally miss, I just forgot about that, right? So now I have to, I took it off and uh, I'm ready to go. But that's not the uh, elephant in the room. It's this bolt right here on the engine bracket. So I'm tightening it down and it's like not really going. I had it all lined up, so I thought, but I didn't. And I tightened it and I can feel it was too bindy and I, Instead of stopping, I continued, and now I cross-threaded things. So this is an M4 by 1.5. Uh, there's a bolt in there, and there's also a, uh, a nut that goes on top of this. So I damaged the bolt in there. So I repaired the threads in the bolt. Now we're going to repair the threads on, on that bracket. Uh, since this is an important bracket, I'm not going to... Uh, 
I'm gonna replace it in the future because it does support the engine. So for now, I just want to get it say uh, completed. We have we have M14, a 1.5 tap tap holder, specially set. I'll put a link in the description. And we have two extensions, a six inch and a three inch. And uh, we're gonna go down like this. All right, try to keep it straight and uh, see if we can save this bracket for now. need to go in and out, in and out, because the metal shavings clog up the uh, flutes and makes it a little hard to turn. I used the impact driver just to get started because I was um, not able to go straight down with confidence with just a wrench. I mean plump, that is. Maybe I could have, but I, you know, I was having a hard time, so just need to get started. In hindsight, I wouldn't recommend the impact trail. So regular drill would be best. I could feel how that would not go well. All right, so that should be it. All right, what we got to do now is grab the bolt and see if we uh, if it'll bite. All right, so there's our bolt. Night and day. Alright. It's a little, it's a little sloppy. You don't like the uh, shaky shake. But guess what? It screws down now. So we saved it. Thanks for uh, dealing with the honesty of brutal honesty of working on cars. Sometimes things just don't work out, you know? And you break stuff. I could have hidden it, but I didn't choose, chose not to. All right, so that's it. You see right here, you wanna take a look at this. Make sure the, these two surfaces are flat. I was tightening this down. I thought I had it started by hand properly, but this wasn't flat. And it was kind of like threading, taking the uh, threads off the top and ruining it. So make sure this these two surfaces are flat. And to do that, you use a combination of your jack on your oil pan, with the piece of wood, and the straps, just to help pull and hold the engine forwards. When I say forwards, I mean towards that direction. My strap underneath here like this, just kind of fed through around the axle. Just like here, just crank a little bit for us to hold it for. So we need to reconnect the uh, reservoir, which kind of leaked out because I left it turned sideways. But we're gonna do, remember those two bolts? Those two right there are what we use to connect it to the engine. The frame, I meant, or engine mounts. To catch that bolt, we're gonna do the old paper inside of the socket. A jet bumped up against the bolt so to grab it. So we're gonna go down. This is the easier side, closest to uh, me. Start this by hand. So we've got the swivel head on there, universal. 
so tricky to get at this uh, angle, you know. Gonna put this hose bracket back on. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter. Like, it just kind of fell into place. All right. Things know where they belong, you know. They just remember. Well, they don't remember. They don't physically have memory in that sense. So, what we humans think about memory. The shapes have been there for so long that they just kind of like fall into place from being held in place. So we got to put the spark plugs back. And uh, yeah, let's try to start with that. So this is a 5 8 spark plug socket. And we're going to put the ignition coils back. All right, so I kind of had to figure it out from looking at the uh, that cover. So what we have is those two holes right there. So to hold the uh, coils down, we have these four, right? Too short, too long, right? So it's gonna go short, long, short, this one's going to be the long one. So set this to, to one. Deep impact. We're not going to... don't like impact tools on engine work. Don't let them stop before they start impacting like that. Crazy. Number. There we go. Got to plug these in. I hope it doesn't bite us. That I had to put this section on first before I put that. In. Because just to go in reverse order, the reverse order is down here, I think. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. I think we'll be fine. If not, oh well. Don't do as I say or do. Just do what I tell you to do after. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to tighten all these back down. Okay. So we need to get some bolts for this. Mm, no, we got to get this. I'll pull these two bolts out. Let's, put them up. Let's get this all lined up. Okay, so like that. I don't want to get in your way, but it's difficult when you're there. Alright, good. So we got those two there. Tighten those down. Redo the connectors. Do you remember this clip here? This uh, green clip? I don't remember it, but that's what seems to belong right there. And as you can see, it's very much broken. So, I think, right, what we gotta do is just kinda like pull it off. So we'll 
pull it off and replace it with a good one. So here's our re replacement, but it does not look like it's gonna fit nicely in there and stay. Uh, maybe it will, I don't know. That's good enough. We got some bolts for the spark plug cover. These are longs, um, but these are for the back part here. Place an L, an L on that to help rem me remember. So. And then these two are going to be short. Two short castle nuts. Remember I told you I had lost one of those? Well, I found it. I didn't really lose it. I just placed it in a bag by itself and I didn't know where the heck it was. Alright. I'm going to clean this surface off a little bit. We're going to get some parts on here. We have a new gasket. See how those holes are over on the driver's side America. Slide those on. Take some lubricant. Spray it around the hose here on the inside of the hose. I need to catch this hose here. Be, this is a little pain in the butt if you do it after. And then we're going to slide that on like that. Get to that hose, remember? It's a little pain in the butt, so get it on. Get this, uh, get that clamp in there S slid forward. That's on the unnamed bag. It's really more like unlabeled bag. I guess they had a lot of confidence I'd remember what these are for. So there we are. So this is the injector that partially came apart as we pulled it out, so. any weird uh, fuel or spark things going on, I'm going to probably have to replace the injector for cylinder number three. So we got to get this injector in, but to get the injector in, we got to get this hose off. Um, so. this, was, this was in the way, I remember this. Remember if the spacers are below or above? I'm gonna say below. Now put those two 12 millimeter bolts on.
So right under here is a knock sensor plug. Don't forget it. It's real easy to forget, but it's right there. Alright, let's plug that in. Okay. Alright, that's plugged in. I got a knock sensor right above the starter. So we need to get this gasket on. So I'm going to take these nuts off. You're gonna help me? You're oh yeah, we just left. <laughs> oh man, it's great. Thanks. Great. You just <laughs> left me. Dang it. All right, just pull this stuff. Okay. So you wanna kind of get this down here? Here we go. Push that radiator back a little bit. Then you slide, slide it, and there you go. So now you're gonna be this hose is out of the way. Something's underneath. Open it up. I think so. Oh, look, there it is. Yep. A little bit of something on this side over here. Something. Yeah. All right. Be good. There you go. That's it. Okay. So now we're gonna put the. Uh, Nuts up top right here. It's loaded. Put these in. These are 12 millimeters, also. So I just did the socket in the uh, piece of paper. So I'm just going to screw that down. So, it's going to fight me a little bit. I can feel it. It's gonna... There you go. Help. So this is this is interesting. You got to pay attention to the orientation of this gasket. See that hole right there? So I had it like this, and it was off. And I'm trying to screw it in. So you got to make sure when you put this on that the holes line up. Okay. So just pay attention to that. So we want to um, tighten up all these here. So it's just five of them. Don't go crazy. There's a torque spec, right? But don't. Just don't go crazy. Okay, so we're gonna uh, connect some hoses here, right? So we have, because we marked them, it's pretty easy uh, to know where to go, where they go. You can see the green here with that green. So we're gonna connect the greens here. Put that off. All right, and we're gonna put that there. And uh, try to slide. Can we slide that? Is that something we can do by hand? That's a good thing. I like troubleshooting. Oh, here we are. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna take this flat, flathead screwdriver, slide it into like that, and then see if we can get a little sliding going on. Because I gotta open it up and I gotta like go like that. Okay. So the next thing we wanna do is. Uh, Get this blue hose on, so. 
All right, my concern is there's a cap that sits on one of these here. I think is missing. Uh, not missing. I actually have it. Uh, it's for somewhere. All right, it might be for here. You know, like this. Yeah, I think it's... Yep, that's what that's for. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, let's get a... Uh, you see that? Yeah, you do. Maybe. All right. Let's just get this blue, blue uh, tire. Okay. So that's off. Put that on. Slide this. Makes you always at work, man. That's the way to keep your mind healthy. Yeah, my man. And stay out of trouble. Some challenging thing going That's on. right. Yes, indeed. What's up, brother? I need to get that hose right here. I don't know, man. Feet videos and all that. Try to get this purple hose on. So we got this right here. Put that on. So I kind of like put it just up enough so I don't have to work too hard. Also, make sure we uh, turn that tab in a way that you can get to it once you put it on. There it is. There we go. All right, so I had to like disassemble some stuff because I didn't get the, the routing of things correct. So this, let's talk about it. Uh, so this hose had to come off so I can do this. I can plug uh, that in right there. That's for the throttle plate. And then this hose here, we'll pull that off. Take this, come over the top. And then right here is a, it's a 10 millimeter, pulls it, this bracket. And then there's another, another one. Before I was really interrupted, here we go, back to where we were. So this bracket here goes right there. Sorry. See the, see the screw right there? Oh, oh, sorry, right here. So unscrew that, put that in. And then down here, right, we have this screw right here. And that's going to go into that bracket, into this hole right here. And then this little cutout right here has a little keyed area right here that it sits in. You can see. Sorry, here's a bigger view. So that's the bolt that sits inside of that little hole there. This bracket goes down in there, slides into there. Okay, so we can go ahead and plug, plug this in now. Okay, that's there. And, uh, get this back on. I already showed you how to slide that on. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you got it. And then we'll put the uh, this hose back on. So what's nice about this is that it's keyed, so you can see like right here, there's a groove where that goes. So you just put that there can't mess it up. And then, uh, let's see. Okay, yep, there you go. So that bracket holds this hose here. I feel like something should be, maybe that, and then that goes there, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, anyway. We get to tighten this up first. That's going to be a 10 millimeter or a Phillips or, or JIS. So 
So right here, under here, we have these, this hose here. So we got the two reds, so let's get those on. Alright, so back over here, we have uh, yellow hoses. So Yellow hose right here. It's yellow. Pop this off. So that's in. We're gonna go ahead and slide out. Slide those forwards. That's good. All right. So. We have a, can you see that? Yellow, yeah you can. Okay, so let's get this yellow hose in. Put this one back on. See that? Okay, and then we're gonna get this. Probably cut that off later, can't we? Yeah. So let's just go ahead and uh, see if we can uh, cut this off. Okay. And we'll cut. cut this one off here. Slide this up. That's good. And then we'll uh get this here. Okay, great. Alright, so here's a bit of an overview of where we are today. It's gonna give you a slow pan. This is where I think most of the wires and hoses should be. This hose here, I was having the hardest time finding it. I had to look at the video, and it's <laughs> it's right here. That was tricky to find. So that's that hose. All our injectors. Got a couple uh, wires coming through right here. I think this is routed correctly. Got a connector here. is under here. Connection to your heater pipe right here. So I think for the most part we have everything where we need it to be. Some stuff we gotta cut off. So this radiator hose has a lot of personality. Uh, there's three clips on there and uh, and then this. This is what I think happened. 
So this hose, right? These, see this little tab right here? When you squeeze the hose together, it clamps and holds it. it keeps the hose, the, the spring-loaded steel in an open position so it can slide it around, right? So to what you want to do is like push down on it. And it's uh, like that. See how it snaps back into place? So that's how that works. And uh, for the most part, these things are difficult to work with when they're in a weird, uncomfortable position. See? So that's how that works. So we gotta, we could take this off and use these, because these are the better clamps. Okay, so this is our radiator hose. Uh, remember I wrote up? on it, this is what it looks like. So, you wanna kind of get a little lubricant. But it goes out there. Here's your airflow sensor that's going to be at the top. We need to take these bolts out. All right, so we got that bolt and this bolt here. They're hard to catch, but you get the idea. Transmission floor dipstick out, so that goes right down here. fluids we're done. This is probably gonna be a radiator temperature sensor maybe, I'm not sure. Alright, we're done, we did it. There's nothing else to plug in, at least not to my knowledge. We do have to go underneath and uh, attach a bolt or two to the subframe, but we'll do that later. I just wanna um, put the fluids in, check and see if we have pressure on the uh, oil. And uh, yeah, 
It started up. Holy cow. Almost forgot this. Ugh. There's a reservoir tank for the coolant. What we're gonna do, we're gonna actually use water. We're gonna do uh, two flushes on this engine if everything goes well. Only because the uh, there's a lot of contamination inside of the, uh, the coolant system and I couldn't find that plug a drain plug on the block. Maybe at some point somebody can tell me where to where that uh, plug is. That'd be nice. All right, so we're gonna fill this up with water, get this up to operational temperature, have the thermostat open, uh, drain it, and then we'll do it again twice, and then we'll drain the uh, we'll do the uh, automatic transmission fluid also. Uh, the next system uh, process we're going to do is to help get rid of the air in the system. So I filled it up pretty close to the top with water. And this is a kit. And I'll put a link in the description below. So we, that's how it works. You get one of these adapters that fits inside of the uh, radiator tube. Put this on top of it. You get two of these. so. One of them should work, hopefully, according. I guess that's why the manufacturer only did two. And then you go like that. So what we're doing, right, is uh, when we fill it up this high, we're gonna to try to see all the air bubbles come out. Uh, the principle is the highest, air wants to go to the highest location. This is now the highest location in the system itself. So all the air is gonna to come to the very top and out. Um, we're gonna fill out the reservoir now. 